Patrick, talk to me about what cyber threats are related to business email compromise, right? Phishing attacks. And why is this important? Yes. Yeah, so if you talk to look at the FBI study, I kind of look at them as a little bit of Bible because they're constantly tracking what are the dollar value of business email compromise attacks. In the, in the last 12 months, it's 2.9 billion. I actually just walked around with one of the local field office here in uh, San Jose. And they said, that, you know, of all the cyber attacks, that's still number one. And it's not just number one by a long shot. It, I mean, it's a dramatic, uh, you know, huge of impact on, on businesses out there and it's growing. And so business email compromise is typically associated with invoice fraud, supply chain fraud. It's more financially oriented and it'll attack your HR departments. It's going to attack your financial departments. The whole express goal is how do I trick you to actually start sending me money as opposed to obviously someone else. Um, interesting enough, the reason why I got in this business, I actually had some of my customers, my last company had business email compromise attacks and they sent us invoices, right? The POs. And then they call us and said, well, well, we never received it. Uh, so obviously that became my eye-opening awareness. And then you start looking at it as a big company is $24 million here or $12 million here or $10 million here. It's a massive impact. And this goes back to email still the front door. You have to open it, right? Otherwise you shut down all your productivity. Bad actors know that. And they've gotten very good to be able to you know, look at how they exploit your users, whether it's your executives, whether they're your financial team, your HR team any number of these teams in there that they're going to obviously trick, get them to send the money to them as opposed to others. So Patrick, I, I always laugh at this, right? You know, the first uh, attempt at fishing against me was the Prince of Africa wanting, you know, money, right? Send me money and send you money back. What are we seeing today? What, what are we, you know, what are, what are the bad actors trying to do today? You know, the, the big sea change, and I think we uh, talked a little bit about this, obviously ChatGPT took the world by storm. Right. Well, it also took the world by storm for the threat actors. So think back to the exact scenario you just highlighted. Right. You would you would look at it you're like almost laugh because there would be broken English or yep. right. It come from JoeBadGuy.com. You look up there in the URL, the senders. It, it was pretty comical, right? But they kept time. And someone fell for it. Obviously, that's the reason why they kept doing it. <laughs> One other thing behind the scenes is a lot of these are more corporation based. So they actually would hire, as example, English speakers. Right now, even sometimes you see a dialect. Some of them got pretty good. Um, what's different now? There's tools out there like Worm GPT, that uh, kind of evil twin of ChatGPT, where I no longer have to hire the native speaker. Right, I can actually also go get a phishing kit off GitHub for about a hundred bucks, which has API access to some of these SendGrid type of uh, services out there. So, bottom line, what I can now do with these with these new evil twin tools is I can create these emails on the fly but in near perfect kind of language. I don't have to hire those to those people. Um, second, I can hook them into these systems that have trusted kind of domains that come to you. Like, including by the way, I can even connect directly into Gmail and launch these attacks. Third, and I almost borrow something. The head of the NSA said, I can no longer tell if it's a real email or not. Mm. So you're actually seeing with these new tools, the ability to almost mimic exactly how you as a user would send this to you and creating trust through these other services. And that's the big sea change that we're seeing in the market. You can't just laugh it off anymore. Uh, and so the final thing I would say here, you almost, because of these new Gen AI tools, the evil twins part of this, you've almost reduced threat acting to near zero cost. So anyone on the planet can be a threat actor now. It doesn't take a corporation to do this because there truly are corporations. There's phishing as a service, ransomware as a service. Here, anyone can be it. And that's 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 the scary part. Now, the good news is you can use AI to fight that. 